So, David. Yeah. What you doing? All right. So this is what has happened this morning. Jenny and I planned on going hiking today and filming it, of course. We even got Alice all set up because she's going with us. She's got her harness on. She's all ready to go. The packs are ready. Everything was ready. And I was going to put the drone up to show you guys just the area we're staying around because it is beautiful. But we had an issue with the drone, our first issue, which scared the heck out of me because I thought, I thought she was dead. So let me show you what's happening, basically. That'll be the easiest thing. All right. So we get the remote controller and the drone turned on. Everything's fine right here. Everything's just dandy. They connect to each other just fine, but the live feed of the camera, this is supposed to be what the drone is seeing from its camera, but it's just a scrambled mess. You know, you can't, I can't fly like that. I can't even see what I'm doing. How can I possibly capture good video for you guys with it like that? So Jenny and I were freaked out. We thought something was wrong with the drone. So what we did is well, I called customer support or technical support at DJI and I spoke with them and they told me to try and record some video and take some pictures. So the video I recorded is this, you know, while watching this scrambled mess. So obviously the camera, there's nothing wrong with the camera or the drone itself because it's recording video just fine. Everything's good except the hat. Um, so they said that our devices are not compatible with our drone anymore. We have Samsung Galaxy Note 5s, and yeah, those are really old. <laughs> they came out in like 2015. So Jenny and I are gonna head into town now and try and get us a compatible device. We're thinking some sort of inexpensive tablet. We're postponing today's adventure for you guys because I am committed to getting you the best video I can possible and the drone is a big part of that. So, yeah, let's go spend some money. My alley cat, you wanna come spend some money with us? She's happy. I think she's happy she doesn't have to go. Yeah. Who's tired? <laughs> so here's an update on what's going on with the drone. It's been five days since it originally failed on us and I spent the entire rest of that day and into the following morning trying to diagnose what the issue was with the drone. I did just about everything you can do from home to figure out what was wrong. I uninstalled and reinstalled the software. I rolled back the firmware on the drone and the remote control and then re did the firmware after that didn't fix it. I re-updated to the current version. Still no good. We got new um, Samsung Galaxy Note 8s, which are on DJI's um, compatible devices list. So after we got those, plugged it in and I was feeling really good. I was like, okay, it's gonna work, it's gonna work. And it didn't work. Same exact issue, getting the black screen on the live view from the, on the phone or just a scrambled mess of whatever. Um, again, I could still fly the drone and everything and the video and pictures it took were fine. It was just a live view on the phone. So I called customer support again and again was on the phone with them for like 15 to 20 minutes before the representative just said, look, you need to go in and get it repaired somewhere. This is most likely a hardware issue. That is not what I wanted to hear, unfortunately. Uh, so Jenny and I, thankfully, we are near a big city, city Phoenix, Arizona. So there is a, an approved uh, retailer of DJI products and uh, approved servicer. They're called DJI Arizona. We took it into them and they said they're gonna have the drone for about two to three days. They said that they're pretty sure they know what the issue is. And we got a message from them a day later saying that they found the problem and it is a hardware issue. The main board on the remote controller needs replaced and uh, that doesn't sound like it's going to be cheap, unfortunately. So, but at least they know what the issue is and they're fixing it. They've had Canarthy, our drone, for two days now and they said that we're supposed to be getting her back tomorrow. So the good news is that we're getting her back 
here real soon. The bad news is, is that it's probably not gonna be cheap at all. <laughs> and then more bad news is that not only has the drone failed, but the RV is failing too. <laughs> Not in a serious way, but just in a in a little silly minor way. Our sink has been leaking, and the leak has gotten so bad that it was basically just a constant stream. We had to place a pitcher, a gallon pitcher, under the faucet, in a, our kitchen faucet, to catch all the water that was running out of it. And what we resorted to doing was shutting our water pump off when we weren't using the water, and then only turning it on as we needed to use the water because it was just leaking so quickly. But I went ahead and disassembled our faucet handles. I found the culprit and it was just dead obvious what the issue was. There's a rubber seal and it was just torn. It had a big tear in it and it was very obvious that that was the issue. Uh, but as I saw what the problem was, I got a little anxious because I was hoping that our seals in the faucet were all O-rings in the handles for the faucet, but this thing was kind of unique, this unique cylinder shaped thing, and I thought, great, no one's gonna have this in stock, but I was able to find an RV in Phoenix, or an RV dealer in Phoenix, Arizona that had that part in stock. It's like, yes, all right, head on into Phoenix. Uh, at the time that we took the drone in, we went to the RV dealer as well, and thankfully they did have the part, it matched exactly, and so the repair of the um, faucet was basically the exact reverse of taking it apart to find out what the issue was. That little seal went right down in and sealed up perfectly, fixed the problem, so no, long, no more leaky faucet. So both problems are being fixed, and yeah, we should be good to go here on both problems here in about a day. So we're still at the campsite that we've been in for a couple weeks now, just north of Phoenix, Arizona, near Lake Pleasant Regional Park. We're out on BLM land, it's absolutely gorgeous here, so we're not all that upset we have to stay a little longer. But we did want to leave two days ago to get to some cooler climates, because it's starting to get warm here. But the day that the drone broke, we were going to go on a hike to the Tonto National Forest, which we've been to before, and we're allowed to fly the drone there. So we were really bummed that the drone broke, and we didn't want to go on that hike and not be able to fly the drone, so we decided to put it off. And now that the drone is being repaired, we are going to actually go ahead and go on a different hike to Lake Pleasant Regional Park, which we can actually see from our campsite. It looks really pretty. We originally rode it off because they don't allow drones there. Well, now that we have, a, we, now that we don't have a drone and it's currently getting repaired, but we still want to go hiking and we have to stay an extra week, why not go check out Lake Pleasant Regional Park and one of the hikes there? It looks gorgeous. Plus, Alley Cat gets to come. She's ready. Alice the Adventure Cat. You ready, little kitty? She's ready. She's so ready. You're so ready. Huh? Actually, I think she's ready for a nap. That's all right. She can sleep in the pack. <laughs> We've made it to the trailhead for the Yavapai Trail, which leads to Yavapai Point. That looks out over Lake Pleasant. It's supposed to be a beautiful view. It is a 3.4 mile in and out trail, which is about the perfect length for little Alice. We think she's gonna do just fine. Oh, she's chasing bugs. <laughs> she's ready to go though. Uh, this, even just at the trailhead though, it looks out to 
Lake Pleasant Regional Park and it's really pretty here so we're pretty excited about this trail. What's really nice about this trailhead is that the parking lot is literally right at it and there's men's and women's bathrooms that are really well taken care of and apparently this trail is not heavily trafficked. There's only one other car at the trailhead so it looks like we're gonna have it basically all to ourselves. <music> So it finally happened. Something scary that we knew was eventually going to happen, you know, the more that we travel and hike throughout Arizona and New Mexico and just the American Southwest. We saw a rattlesnake and it, yes, it was very scary. I was just walking on the trail with the backpack and I had Alice in the backpack so Alice was totally safe. But you know, I'm just walking on the trail and I hear a ch -ch -ch and I instantly knew what that was. And I'm looking around and I see it and it's literally right off the side of the trail and it blended in with the vegetation so perfectly. It, it was this like greenish yellowish color whereas I thought rattlesnakes would be kind of a brownish tan type color but this guy just blended in with the plant so perfectly. And I walked around it and Jenny's coming up behind me and I said, Jenny, there's a rattlesnake right here. So she walked around the trail safely and then we just marveled at it because it was beautiful in a dangerous, scary type of way. You know, we had never seen a rattlesnake before, let alone one in the wild. So they're definitely out right now. Today is a warm day and the nights are warm. So, you know, they're gonna be out now. Um, so now we know to keep our eyes peeled. We knew that there was a chance of seeing one, but we just thought because of the time of year, they might not be out, but they definitely are now. I'm really glad I was able to get video of it though, but don't worry, we kept our distance. I was just on full zoom with the camera, so I was a safe distance away from the snake the entire time. So was Jenny, and so was Alice. Oh yeah, and speaking of animals, I completely forgot to say this earlier, I meant to, is that we, you know, the donkeys that are by our campsite, I finally got one making their weird, just crazy donkey noises. If you've never heard an actual donkey, you know, you, you'd probably just think they do the hee-haw kind of thing, right? But they don't do that at all, and this is what they sound like. <laughs> Yeah, it's ridiculous. They make just the most ridiculous noises and Jenny and I are just constantly hearing that around our campsite because there's so many wild donkeys out there. It's hilarious, but we really like it.
this has been an excellent short trail. This point lookout is absolutely gorgeous. I can see the BLM camping area that we're camped in, which is really cool. And Alice has done so good on this hike. It's only 1.7 miles in and 1.7 miles back out. We didn't want to do too long of a trail because we weren't really sure how she was going to handle it, if she would be okay riding in the pack this time, or if she would want to walk the whole time. And we definitely, we definitely knew that if she wanted to walk the whole time, we needed a really short trail. So she's done amazing though. I'd say the whole first half of the trail, she was all about hiking on the trail. She really wanted to get out and walk around. And then the last half of the in part, she wanted to sleep the whole time. So this is an excellent spot to stop. There's this beautiful bench here that is in memory of a couple rangers. And we're going to go ahead and enjoy our lunch. Alice even has a little bit of lunch that she can eat too. We had an absolute blast hiking the, man, I still can't remember what the name of it's called. Yep, yep, at the point, lookout point, I don't know. It, the right name's right here. Down at the bottom, it'll be there. <laughs> I don't remember what it's it called. It starts with a Y. Yeah. There's it, a V in there somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little bizarre. That was an excellent hike. Nice and easy, not too difficult beautiful views from start to finish. You always have some sort of a view of Lake Pleasant. It was a very nice hike. We're actually really happy that we didn't take Sweetie on that hike because we encountered that rattlesnake. David was hiking ahead of me. You know, I'm a little bit slower of a hiker than he is. Um, luckily, Alice had already kind of pooped out, so she wanted to ride in the pack, so she was nice and, you know, out of harm's way when David encountered the rattlesnake. But there's a good chance that if sweetie had been hiking with us that she might have been sniffing around and stuck her nose right in into it i don't know we're just glad that sweetie wasn't with us and i know that alice had a blast she is currently pooped out and i'm sure she'll be pooped out the rest of the night but i know she had a lot of fun chasing bugs and sniffing plants and biting plants <laughs> and then sleeping most of the hike now, Lake Pleasant Regional Park actually offers a lot of different activities, not just hiking. What are you doing? <laughs> you can um, go horseback riding on the trails. You can go mountain biking on some of the trails. They have tons of water sports and... Uh, camping. Camping. Yeah, they have they have camping opportunities there. It's, it's just a really cool little park. You know, basically anything you can imagine a state park would offer. They've got it there. And the entrance fee just for day use was seven dollars and then they have additional fees you know if you're going to be horseback riding or um on the water or anything like that so i thought that was a really awesome deal we had a great time and we really liked it plus it's i don't know three or four miles down the dirt road which by the way was really hilarious driving home with alice she was trying so hard to sleep in the truck i feel so bad that dirt road is really really bumpy so poor her was just trying so hard to sleep. It was, it was adorable, but she's pooped out now, so that's good. But we're home now, obviously. <laughs> Sweetie's happy we're home. Butters had a great time with the kitten not being home, I'm sure. And David is going to keep his promise to me and finish watching the Harry Potter series with me. We're actually on the very last movie, The Deathly Hallows Part Two. So we're going to watch that tonight and enjoy the rest of our evening. So we'll catch you guys later. Bye!
Now you guys don't think we would have ended that video without giving you an update on our drone Canarthi, would you? Well, finally got her back today from being repaired and the issue was actually not the drone itself. It was the main board on the remote control was somehow getting in the way of, some issue was getting in the way of the drone's live feed communicating with our phone. So it wasn't the phones after all, but the remote control. And ooh, the repair bill turned out to be $346.06. Not including the phones. Yeah, that's true. But we need new phones anyway, so that's all right. But, you know, totally worth it because we use the drone all the time. We love it. It's a DJI Phantom 4. We've had it for two years, and this is the very first issue we've had. So if you're curious on looking at what we've got, you can check out the link in the description below to see exactly the type of drone we got. But now, time to give her her first test flight after getting her back. See you guys later. Bye.